Hey guys, Brian Willie with Local Client Takeover, and I really want to welcome you to the course. Um, there's been a lot of demand, a lot of people asking, how do I get into the three pack? This is completely, you know, screwed up my business. What do I do? Uh, everything that I've tried doesn't seem to work. And so we've heard you loud and clear, and we wanted to put together something that will show you how to do it with, you know, almost near certainty every time. So really quickly, this is me just to put a name with a face with my wife here, about to go into one of my favorite places, Oktoberfest. Um, and this is probably the last time I was actually uh, standing before this picture. But anyway, just to put a quick name with a face, um, again, welcome to the course. So here's what we're gonna talk about. Um, I wanna talk about you know why the three pack is so important, um, what it is, what it did, why it was done, what it's not, um, you know, and then go through really quick, kind of a, a, not really a course outline, but kind of what we're going to be covering in detail and how it's going to be presented. So really quickly, why is the three pack so important, not only to the future of your business? So whether you run an SEO agency, a digital marketing agency, um, you are out there doing rank and rent sites, for instance, and you relied on maps listings to get you, you know, additional results or, you know, maybe you do just pure lead gen paper lead sites where you needed phone calls and you use maps as part of your strategy. Um, you were heavily impacted if you were used to being able to go out and get maps listings and, you know, you had seven spots available. And so it wasn't quite as hard to get one of seven spots available. And then suddenly it shrunk to three and it became very, very difficult. Equally, you know, as, as important and, and really, really almost, almost tougher is if you're doing client SEO, your clients went from probably having a lot of phone calls if they were in positions four through seven in the seven pack to no phone calls, <laughs> um, potentially overnight. And, you know, I know a lot of, uh, SEOs out there who got fired as a result of this, uh, their, your clients don't necessarily understand that we don't control Google. And that's something you know, throughout the course, I want you to keep in mind is that we we just simply don't control Google. We Google is giving us free space to use as SEOs. Um, you know, we're, they're giving us a, a place where we can have a maps listing. They're giving us a place where we can rank organic properties, but they can take it away at any time, right? And that's why I'm going to kind of tell you why they do it, you know, not just from not just for maps, but why they've done it in the past with algorithmic shifts, uh, different updates they do like Panda and Penguin. Um, and it boils down to money, basically. So, you know, it's very important to be in the three pack because that's where the visibility lies. That's where the, um, you know, people are clicking on the listings is in the three pack. Um, so you, you really have to be there. You know, it's like having the old organic listings where you're at the bottom of the page, where you're getting some traffic maybe, but nowhere near the amount of traffic as if you were at the very top of the page in positions one through three. Um, you know, and it can literally make or break you when it comes to not only getting your own, you know, your own phone to ring uh, to get you hired, but, you know, get additional proof that you need to go out to rank and rent sites or get enough phone calls coming in to do pay per lead. You know, if you don't have that coming in, you're kind of dead in the water, right? So the whole purpose of this course is to give you the means that we used and that we've used over and over and over again to successfully get in the three pack and stay in the three pack and even claw our way out of the, the old seven pack into the three pack. Um, so what is the three pack? And, you know, what did it do? So the three pack essentially rolled out August 6th through 7th, 2015. Um, and basically what happened is people's perception anyway was that overnight it went from a seven pack and then they woke up on Friday morning or whenever it was and everything was a three pack. Now that's that's really not quite true. The, the writing was really on the wall. If you're paying close attention, um, this is something that Google was testing for months. I would say eight or nine months before, there were three packs everywhere. So there, the writing was on the wall, the signals were there. We should have known that Google was going to be uh, moving towards this um, because they're testing. Whenever we see them testing things, at some point they're gonna land on something. 
Um, not always. I mean, there I've seen times when they test different um, ways of presenting things and that, you know, just didn't work or whatever, and they never went back to it. But this was something that they were using in many, many markets. A lot of different local areas had a three pack, especially on uh, mobile devices, um, but even sometimes on desktops, more commonly on mobile though. And so we saw this for months. And so, you know, it, it was a little funny to me that people would wait, were waking up August 6th and 7th going, oh my God, the sky is falling, right? And didn't see it coming because really it was there, you know, it, it was coming. Um, and so really all it was is it wasn't an overnight thing. It was something that was being tested that they finally figured out that this test was successful. Let's move to this, okay? Um, so here's what it did. 57% of all businesses essentially lost their first page visibility. That's absolutely huge. That means 57% of those businesses that were there before that had the ability to show up on page one and have their their uh, star ra- you know ratings prominently displayed and get you know lots and lots of phone calls from maps boom overnight gone again not really overnight because we've you know it was kind of a slow rollout but that's a huge huge loss and it's a it's a big you know it's a lot to swallow if you've got clients for instance who were used to getting phone calls it's like how do you explain that to them right and so that's a lot of the reason for this course is that I know a lot of people again that got got terminated. They got fired because people just said, oh, you know, well, you should have seen this coming or you should fix this. And I know people have been just scrambling, trying to do things like throw more citations at their listings and try everything under the sun to get into the three pack and they're still struggling. So that's why we're, we're, we're doing this course. We want to help you, um, consistently get ranked, um, claw your way back up from the seven pack, get a new, get a new listing ranked, all that good stuff. Um, so why was this done now? It's pretty interesting. There's a lot of, you know, um, high, what I'll call high authority SEO blogs out there. I'm not going to name them by name. You know, them, you've seen them. Um, you know, I'm I'm not going to bash on them because a lot of times they do put out really good quality content. That's true. Um, that's very, you know, uh, important to the industry, but there are some people who I would say sort of brown nose Google. Why, why they do it? I don't know. But they, they tow the party line, the Google party line. And I, I said town the party line, so ignore my uh, very fast improper spelling. <laughs> um, so they're towing the, the Google party line, telling Google sort of what they want to hear, right? It's kind of like patting them on the back saying, oh, good job, Google. Um, so, you know, I read, I've read some analysis where people said, oh, it was purely for user experience. Google figured out that people were not clicking anything that were that was lower than position three, you know, positions four through seven saw no action at all. And so they figured from a user experience perspective, well, why even have it? And I can tell you right now, that's 100% BS. Um, And the reason I know is that many, many times, I would see seven pack listings out there where the first listing had no stars. And the seventh listing had 25 five star reviews. Now, who do you think was getting called more often? The one with no reviews in number one or the one with 25 five-star reviews? So I think you know where I'm going with this. Um, the, your ability to actually get clicks and phone calls on Google Maps has to do with your reviews, period. Um, that's the user experience. That is what people are looking for. Uh, you know, think of the, think of the restaurant industry. I, you know, and I tell my clients this all the time. I tell them literally to think of themselves as restaurants, even though I don't work with a single restaurant. I almost, I almost entirely work with lawyers, but I tell them when they're reluctant to go out and get star ratings and get, you know, um, you up their star ratings and get, you know, user reviews, they tell me I don't have time or I want to have time, but I just can't make the time. I tell them, think of yourself as a restaurant. I said, do you, do you go out to eat before you check the reviews on a restaurant? No, you know, and, and I'm the same way. Like I won't, I won't really do anything until I've read usually a number of reviews from different sources. And that's the way that, you know, um, online user behavior has shifted, you know, to that, to that method. People have the same mentality. So my point in all this is that 
you have to have star ratings. And so the, the person that was in the seven pack in position seven with 25 five star reviews, you better bet they were getting called way more than the person in number one. So in other words, it's great to have the, the traffic and the positioning or, you know, um, of being quote unquote number one, but it doesn't mean anything unless somebody takes action. And what makes people take action on a maps listing are reviews. So for somebody to say, well, you know, those, those were not getting clicked anyway, that might be true if positions four, you know, four through seven had no reviews and only positions one through three had reviews. But I've seen it over and over and over again where that just wasn't the case. So to me, that's just a kind of BS party line, you know, analysis uh, that is not true. What's true? Um, the seven pack took up too much ad real estate. Um, guess what Google makes its money on? Billions of dollars a year, Google AdWords. So what they're doing is they were trying to shrink down the seven pack to figure out how can they best present their ads so that their ads stand out and get clicked more so they make more money. Now, did they expand the ads? I don't think so. You know, there weren't really more ads uh, that were added, for instance. Uh, but what it did is it drew some attention away from that seven pack and, you know, basically um, drew more attention towards AdWords. So Google is doing a balancing act, basically. They, are, they understand that people rely on, you know, rely on maps at this point, right? They've, they've, they've had it as a part of their system for many, many years now. People go to Google search engine, especially on a local basis, to find things locally, and they want to read you know, they want to read star ratings, they want to re or reviews, and they want to see the star ratings, and they want to be able to get directions. So Google's not going to just take away the map section entirely. They're not stupid. They know why a lot of local local searchers come to their search engine. And for Google, it's all about getting them back to their search engine. So that's not going away. So they figured, okay, well, how do we do this? We have to shrink it somehow so that we can at least get people, you know, give people what they want, by quote unquote displaying the most relevant results, which you know, as the course goes on, I'll show you, is a little bit of a joke. Um, there's still a lot of spammy stuff out there in the uh, in the three pack, and I'm sure you've seen it. I know a lot of people have asked me questions on it. It's all over the place. So it's Google attempting to do a balancing act to keep people coming back to Google instead of Yahoo or Bing, um, while still making sure that the focus is always on ads. So I, I hope that makes sense. And that's true of really any kind of algorithm shift too. You know, they're, they are, um, they're always trying to quote unquote weed out spam. They want to serve up the best results. Well, why do they want to serve up the best results? Because they want to get people using um, Google over and over again. If Google served up crap results all the time, um, people are not gonna come back to Google as often, then their ads are not gonna get clicked as often. Hence the reason for algorithmic shifts, penalties, and all the other things that we see. Um, let's talk about what it's not. What, what was the, the three pack not about? It, it wasn't a penalty. It was not a massive algorithmic shift. It was really just a user experience change um, in the sense that, you know, it, it was, um, more of an internal user experience change. It's in my mind, it's really more about Google profitability or a Google profitability change masquerading as a user experience change. So don't think of it as, uh, you know, I was there and boom, I got penalized and, or there was some algorithmic shift in August and boom, I got penalized. That's not really true. If you were in, you know, position four, you may still be in position four. So you didn't lose your rankings. What you lost is your visibility. Um, your rankings may very well still be there. It's just that nobody can see you, right? So it's it's really the same thing as being at the top of page two or the bottom of page one. You're there, but nobody can see you. So does it really count? No. So let's really quick hop into what you're going to learn, um, how I'm going to be presenting this material. Here's what I want for you at the end of this course. I really truly want you to have a firm understanding of exactly how to get into the three pack um, either with a brand new listing or move your way up. You know, I kind of call it clawing your way back up. Uh, if you were in the former seven pack or below back into the three pack. Okay. I want you guys to have an unfair advantage over the rest of the market because you took action. You bought this course. Um, 
And so we're going to be teaching you exactly how that works. Um, and so, you know, get ready, hold on to your hats because there's, there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of lessons. They're going to be pretty concise. Um, and I'm going to organize them in a, in a couple different ways. Number one, I want to, I want to teach you what some people would call kind of common strategies, things that I've even taught before and why they still work and how, and maybe, you know, on some of them, I'm going to give you some tweaks that you can do to maximize your chances of getting in the three pack. And then we're going to dive into a whole section of very advanced strategies that your, your competition, I guarantee you, uh, just doesn't even know about. They haven't thought about it. Um, and the reason for this is, you know, you may need to use this. Um, you may need to use some of them or, you know, all of them, depending on the competition level and really your, your own testing. So I get asked all the time, you know, if I do this, this, and this, Will I make it in the three pack? And I tell you people, I don't know. You need to test this stuff, right? Um, you know, in general, yes, you, if you follow these steps, you're going to get into the three pack, but you may need to go into more and more advanced strategies. You know, if you're, if, you know, let's say that you're doing paper lead, uh, for instance, and the niche is, um, I don't know, you know, uh, landscape maintenance in some small town, are you going to have to do as much as trying to rank a personal injury lawyer in Los Angeles, California? Absolutely not. You're, you're going to have to do so much more to get that personal injury lawyer ranked. And that's why I want to be able to kind of segment this stuff into common strategies, very advanced strategies. Um, the advanced strategies, in, in a lot of cases, you can set these things up yourself. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. Um, but you know, more often than not, I'm going to point you to some tools that I use where you have to learn to invest in yourself if you want to do well in this business. Okay. So some of these advanced strategies may require you purchasing some additional things. Um, you know, you could go out and build some of these things by hand or, or outsource it to a VA or find cheap ways to do it or even free ways to do it. So we'll talk about that, but I'm all about, you know, speed, um, getting things done quickly, maximizing my time. So I'm going to show you uh, some ways that you can get some of this stuff done for you and, you know, make sure that you get that competitive advantage that you need. So the course is going to be broken up into parts, common strategies, advanced strategies. Um, we're going to also have a section on troubleshooting. There's a lot of things out there that just snag people. Um, they get very, very stuck for whatever reason, and they're not sure what to do. You know, we'll talk about things like duplicate listings and how that can, you know, really screw you up. Um, major citation problems where things don't match or somebody's moved. We'll have a whole section on troubleshooting. Um, we're going to go through examples of ranking businesses, not only with a physical address, but I also want to go through some examples of service-based listings and what to do um, where a business you know, goes to see a customer at their location. So we'll talk about both types, okay? Um, and then we're going to get into really sort of ninja tactics, I would I would say, that how, how you can actually use the three-pack to your advantage to get more phone calls for either yourself or your paper lead business, or if you do client SEO, get way more phone calls for your client. Um, you're going to look like a hero. It, it'll get you hired more often by having proof, um, keep you hired and allow you to command higher fees. So that's kind of the way the course is organized. Why don't we get started with module one? I'll see you over. Okay. So welcome back to video two. Uh, before we can move into actual techniques that we need to follow to actually, you know, get into the three pack. Um, I want you to clearly understand the three major types of results that can be pulled. Okay. And when I say pulled, I mean, Google actually displays a maps result. There are cases where Google will not display a maps result, uh, for longer tail phrases. And I'll, I'll, I'll probably show you that at the end of this video. Um, but in general, there are three major types of ways that Google will display a maps result. So I'm going to show you the three examples just to kind of put it into perspective here. And this is very important when you first start out figuring out, you know, it, whether you have a client site, you're doing paper lead, lead gen of your own, of any sort, rank and rent. You know, you really need to do some research and figure out, number one, where 
um, you know, in what cases, for what keywords does Google um, display a maps result? You know, do they even do it at all? And how are they doing it? Because that's going to dictate really, you know, whether or not um, kind of less advanced strategies are, are need to be employed or if we need to dive into much more advanced strategies. So there's really the old, what I would call the old style um, Google Places type of listing. And, and what I mean by that is that for many years, um, you having a website and what you did on that website and where it was ranked had absolutely no bearing on your ability to get ranked very highly in, in Google Places, what it was called at the time. Um, all, all that was required was put up a listing, maybe optimize the listing a little bit, and build some really good citations to it. Um, and in some cases, don't build any citations at all. Google would just go out and scrape other listings from you know, different uh, third-party providers across the web, data aggregators, which we'll get into, and would create a listing for you. So really, it it's what I would refer to as the old seven-pack style uh, Google Places listing before... Um, before we got into what's called a blended algorithm type of listing, and I'll show you that in just a minute. So, meaning, let me just show you what this, you know, how this works. So, I, I typed in Oakland Appliance Repair just as an example, and you can test this yourself. But essentially, if I look at the number one result, General Refrigeration Services Company, and I click on their website, let's see, you know, what what their website's name is. It looks like Refrigerator Repair. Um, and then what I want to do is I would go down the results and I would see anywhere between pages one and two or maybe even three is refrigeratorrepair.com listed somewhere. So if we, if we, and I'll tell you no, I mean, just to save you some time, but we can just, we'll go down two pages, you can go down further. But no, it's not there at all, right? So where your website is positioned um, organically in this case for Oakland Appliance Repair had absolutely no bearing on whether or not this listing, you know, showed up in number one, okay, or in the number one position. The next one, Kim's Appliance, doesn't even have a website. The third one, um, Antone's Appliance, has a website, so let's look at that, and it's called Antone's Appliance, oddly enough. And so let's check Antone's Appliance and see where they're ranked. You know, you see, notice there's all kinds of service listings like, you know, it's Yelp, 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 which is a result of the Pigeon update that occurred about a year ago, um, maybe a little longer, a year and a half ago, where they were trying to serve up much more quote unquote relevant, you know, local search results. And what they did is they rewarded all these directories with, you know, the top listings. That's why you see a lot of directories on top. Can you beat these people out? Absolutely. So I don't want you to concern yourself with that. Just know that that's why that occurs. So do we see Antone's appliances or not? You know, somewhere in the first couple pages. So let's just, you know, scroll down a little bit and I'll let you go beyond page two. But again, the answer is no, it's not there. So Bottom line, for Oakland Appliance Repair, we can conclude that really what they're doing here, what Google's doing is displaying um, results that have absolutely nothing to do with how well optimized your website is. They're not factoring that in at all. It's just sort of the old places style standalone listing where you could still get uh, a really quick listing you know, in, in, in Google Maps potentially in the three pack without even having a website. I mean, you know, this, this doesn't have a website. These two have websites, but they're nowhere to be found. Um, now I want you to con contrast that with what's called blended results ranking. Um, several years ago, Google moved much more towards a blended algorithmic result, meaning that they factored in a number of different things. They factored in, and primarily the things that they factored in are, you know, the quality and number of citations that you had. So that that's always kind of remained important. So keep that in mind. And of course, Google's asking me how satisfied I am with these results. I should click very dissatisfied. Just keep clicking that. Um, 
But they, you know, Google moved to a blended algorithmic result, meaning that they would display uh, maps listings not only based on you know how well optimized you were on the listing itself, and we're gonna we're gonna go into great detail about how to optimize a listing, but also your citations, but also the quality of your on-site website and in general your ranking placement. Um, it's it's shifted a little over the years. Just to give you a real quick history lesson on how this stuff worked and kind of where it's went, it it used to matter much more about how well you were optimized on site. It didn't matter as much where you were ranked um, in terms of, you know, were you on pages one or two or three or something like that. And, you know, Google was blending that result. You know, they're, they were looking at, okay, well, they've got a great optimized listing. They've got great citations. They're on page one and two. Okay, we're going to serve up a maps result. That's a blended algorithmic result. Um, and I'm going to show you in a second how those display a couple different ways, just so you can kind of identify it. Um, so they were not concerned with that back in the early days of using the so the so-called quote-unquote blended algorithmic result. If you had good on-page factors involved, um, some of the things that I'm going to still teach you today to employ um, in, in a later video, and you had a good optimized listing and some good citations, you would you would rank. What's happened now is the blended algorithm has shifted much more to um, add an additional factor, which is where are you ranked? Wh what is your organic result? Are you somewhere between pages about one and two? Um, every once in a while, I'll see that move to page three very, very rarely. So meaning that in order to do to, for Google to serve up your result, it, it's not enough any longer in most cases to have um, to have just a, an optimized listing and, you know, citations. Right. Um, and it's not enough to just have your on page stuff dialed in. It also matters where you are ranked organically. And so there's two types of blended algorithmic results. Number one are what I would call sort of disconnected algorithmic results or blended algorithmic results. And I'll show you an example. And what I mean by this is that they're somewhat disconnected. They don't um, completely, they don't completely track the order of the organic results. They appear in the organic results somewhere between pages one and two, um, but they don't really necessarily track the maps order. So, you know, in other words, Tiger Air is not showing up um, necessarily above Collins Cooling, above Fred's Heating in the organic results. Um, so it's sort of a disjointed or disconnected version of that. So let me show you really quickly what I mean. And again, all this stuff is really important to your advanced research of whether what it's going to take to get you there. Um, what's the competition level like? So this is the least competition, this Oakland appliance repair result that I showed you that, that basically doesn't factor in the blended algorithm at all. This is the next hardest where it, there is a blended algorithm at play, but they're not really tracking the exact results of the organic listings um, on down to exact tracking of organic listings with, with what's displayed in the order on maps. And I'll show you that in a second. So let me just show you how this works, where it's kind of disjointed, disconnected. Um, Tiger Air Heating and Cooling website. Let's see what their website name is. Tiger Air Online. That's a really scary picture. I don't know what she's pointing to, but I'm gonna get out of there really quickly because that's kind of weird. Um, she's very excited. So, okay, so you'll see, you know, like WHHan, whatever it is, .com is number one. Let's see where Tiger Air appears. Okay, so it's not on page one. Okay, so notice where, okay, here's, here's where it gets interesting. Um, keep this in mind, Fred's Home Services, um, FHSoeho.com, I have no idea what that has to do with Fred's Home Services, um, is above Tiger Air Online. So Fred's is at number position 11, Tiger Air is in position 13. So keep that in mind. Let's go back up here. 
So notice that that's not tracking exactly. We have Fred's organically listed above Tiger Air, yet Tiger Air is showing in the number one spot. So see how it's um, not tracking exactly the, the order at all. Um, let's look at Collins. So what's the website for Collins? That's collinscooling.com. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to really quickly check to see where they are, where they've landed organically. So I'm just glancing really quickly. I don't see it on page one. Let's check page two. And I apologize, you're, you're going to see a toolbar load up. This is just the, the Moz toolbar that pulls in domain authority, uh, page authority. It helps. It's a good tool to actually install, by the way. Uh, to help you figure out what the domain authority, page authority is of particular sites. Okay, so I don't see Collins anywhere on page two. Let's hop over to page three really quickly. And there it is, position 22. So Collins is on page three, and we have, it looks like Fred's and um, Tiger Air on page, one, on page two. Notice none of them are on page one. Notice that Fred's Air actually organically is, is uh, outranking Tiger Air. Collins Cooling is on page three. So this is what I would call sort of a disconnected or disjointed blended result. It's the maps listings are not tracking the exact order of the organic listing, but Google is somehow factoring in where the rankings occur um, where the organic rankings occur as a as one of the factors to determine whether or not they're going to show up in maps. Um, so you know again, if we went back to this uh, this earlier result or this earlier um, example, this is very different, right? This just had to do with optimization and citations. This has to do with optimization citations and on page factors and where you're ranking, not necessarily the order that you're ranking. But here's how I typically come across these and where, and where they usually, you know, what you usually need to do to get there. Um, you usually need to be somewhere between pages one and two organically ranking before you're ever going to get into maps. So that means there's some actual regular SEO, old fashioned SEO that you're going to need to do. Um, and I will direct you over to um, our course, Local Profit Breakthrough. Mark is an absolute expert at local SEO, uh, setting up on-site factors, um, you know, actually how to get ranked properly and quickly and efficiently for lasting results. So I'll direct you to him uh, for those questions, localprofitbreakthrough.com. You can go check that out. That's a, a mastermind course that we have that will teach you everything you need to know about SEO. So in other words, it's not enough to just know a little bit about maps, slap up a maps listing, throw some citations at it and think you're going to rank because Google is taking into consideration other factors. Um, they're looking at, you know, how good is your on page stuff um, set up? Does it tie into your maps listing correctly? And we're going to, we're going to show you all that stuff, exactly how to do that. But you know, almost more importantly, how's your SEO? How's your, um, how are you ranking organically? Are you somewhere between pages one and two? Occasionally it'll drift off onto page three like we saw with Collins Cooling and Heating. Um, you need to be about pages one or two in order to ever enter uh, the three pack. You know, there are, there are exceptions. Google is always gonna have exceptions. So, you know, don't, don't send me angry emails and say, well, but I saw this and it wasn't tracking that. Google's always testing. They're always gonna display certain results differently on mobile, on desktop. Um, it's not always going to be 100% like this, but in general, I would say 95, 98% of the time, this is how it is, okay? You have to have your SEO stuff dialed in in addition to your maps factors. So this is a disconnected type of listing where it's not, the, the organic rankings are not directly tracking the order of maps, okay? Let me show you one that does. And this is the third type, and this is what I would consider to be um, the most competitive and where you really have to get into a lot more of these advanced strategies to get ranked. So I typed in Orange County Divorce Attorney. Uh, Orange County, California, 3 million people population, I think, maybe getting closer to 4 million. Huge, huge area. Uh, second only to Los Angeles. Massive, massive county. Has, you know, 30-something cities. 
uh, big, 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 right? Divorce is a very, you know, competitive keyword. You can see by just take a look at the ads. There's a lot of people that advertise on divorce. Now, what I want to show you really quickly is we have Farzad Family Law, Wilkinson and Finkbeiner and the Maggio Law Firm, one, two and three. Let's go check these to see how these are tracking in order. So if I go down into the organic results, number one, Farzad, right here. They're number one here. Um, then we have a Yelp listing, a Justia listing, a lawyers.findlaw fi listing, a second lawyers.findlaw, primebuyersreport.org, which is a, looks like a directory site. Then we have um, Mark Minyard, who, by the way, is not even in the three pack at all. He just happens to be doing pretty well organically. Then we have orangecountydivorce.com, which is what I want to show you. So guess what Wilkinson and, and Finkburner's website is? orangecountydivorce.com. So notice that this is tracking the order. Farzad came first. Then, you know, we have a bunch of stuff in between, but then Wilkinson is next, essentially, in, in the three-pack matching up with um, the organic rankings. Then we have the Maggio Law Firm. So guess what's next? The Maggio Law Firm. So the organic results may have stuff in between it where they're not, you know, they're not even listed in maps. But when you have this strict ordering of, um, you know, the blended algorithm where the maps listing and the organic listing are directly tracking each other, those are the toughest to get ranked for. You really have to be on your game. Um, typically, you have to be on page one to even have a chance to get into uh, the three pack and pretty much you're going to, you know, you've got to do better than everybody else. You know, you've got to do better than Farzad out in this case or better than Wilkinson um, with not only all of your maps factors, all the stuff that you're doing on maps, but everything that you do on your website, your SEO has to be absolutely a hundred percent on point. I'm going to show you, you know, one quick thing before we go. I mean, that's, that's really what I wanted to show you in this video is you've got to research this stuff, guys. You've got to figure out how hard or easy will it be based on the type of result that Google serves up to get into maps. Am I going to need to really know SEO? Do I need to up my game uh, to make sure that I'm ranking very, very well? And, you know, you need to figure out what your competition is doing um, differently or better than you to do that. So if I wanted to outrank Farzad, I'm going to just show you really quickly in, in general now, you know, metrics are, are not everything. People, you'll hear people a lot of times talk about majestic trust flow, citation flow. You know, is that a good indicator of whether or not a, a, a PBM site is good or a site is good in general? Yeah, it's, a, it's an indicator, right? Um, is domain authority, page authority a good indicator? Yeah, it's an indicator. Um, page rank is kind of dead. You know, Google's not updating page rank anymore, although you'll see you know, the old page rank display, they're not going to be updating that anymore. Um, the thing that's really important is, in my mind, domain authority. It's not the end all be all, but I'm going to show you something really quickly. So we have Farzad on top with a page authority of 33, domain authority 37. We have uh, Wilkinson with a page authority of 31, domain authority of 19. Notice that's lower, right? So we had uh, we had Farzad at 33 and 37. These guys are at 31 and 19. Look, they're in position eight versus position one. Uh, Maggio actually has a better page authority and their domain authority is a little bit lower. So overall, while their homepage is 41, their overall domain authority is 32. So notice that this directly correlates to Farzad being in position one. So really do keep in mind that increasing your overall domain authority is very important. And um, there's a lot of ways to do that. I'm not gonna go into detail on how to do that. But when you're in competitive markets like this, that's the kind of stuff you need to be concerned with. Um, that's the kind of stuff that's going to get you onto maps by having your SEO so dialed in and you know outranking your competition and also doing all the things that are important for maps with your optimization, that you're gonna up your game and you know increase your chances of getting on maps dramatically. So things like page authority, domain authority actually really do matter. 
um, no matter what people say. They're not the end all be all, but I do want to show you that more often than not, I see sites with higher page authority, domain authority, outranking other sites. So you need to figure out how do I go about increasing that authority, okay? Um, so that's enough for this video. Uh, I'll, let, I'll leave it up to you to just, you know, search for other terms when you're doing your research. Make sure a maps result even shows up. Um, oftentimes, it's only going to show up for certain things. You know, there might be seven or eight major keywords that, that it'll show up for. And most of your long tails, it's never going to pull a maps listing anyway. So you don't need to worry about it. You just need to worry about how do I get ranked organically there. Okay, so I will see you over in the next video. Take care. Hey, so welcome back. In this video, what we're going to talk about is going through the listing process, how to set up a brand new listing. Um, in a different video, we're going to talk about how to optimize an existing listing so that, um, you know, if you, if you are sitting somewhere in the seven pack or even below and want to get into the three pack, we're going to talk about how to do that. What we're going to do is, is start with the assumption that um, you have no listing at all, and I'm just going to walk you through the process of how to get a listing, claim one in case you've not done that. Um, and in, you know, in further videos or future videos, we're going to talk about um, optimizing that listing. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to google.com uh, forward slash business. And you'll basically be presented with a screen where you can sign in or get on Google, which is really kind of messed up because if you get, if you click on get on Google, you have to sign in. So the first thing you really need to do is create a Gmail account for the listing that you're going to do. Sorry about that. Let me just uh, get rid of that little window there. Um, you really need to create a new account. Okay. So a couple words of caution here, when you are creating brand new accounts, especially for paper lead accounts, uh, lead generation site accounts, things like that, um, I would at a minimum clear your history, cash, cookies, all that stuff before signing up for account. You know, you'd go through the process of creating a brand new Google account and you know, it really doesn't matter, um, just set up a name and be able to get verified. Um, usually you've got to have a phone number. Obviously, you know, ideally you can um, get some sort of tracking number where you're going to be able to forward it to your mobile phone and it'll just, it'll essentially it'll verify instantly. It doesn't, it's not going to, in most cases, it'll never even text you or do anything as long as you fill in a phone number. Um, if you skip the verification process by clicking this, uh, it may require additional phone verification. But if you put in pretty much any kind of mobile phone number, and I, again, I would keep them separate. Get a tracking number on CallFire, or you know, it, we're going to talk about you know um, analytic call tracking, which is Joe Troyer's product, which is really good for paper lead maps listings, lead generation maps listings in general. Um, you know, use one of those. Google is likely never going to text you while you're creating a Google account. So first step, you have to create a new Google account. I encourage you to uh, set it up and then, you know, obviously keep track of this stuff because I can't tell you <laughs> how many times I've been guilty of uh, not keeping track of things where I go back and I'm like, oh, what was that email again? So make sure you write this stuff down in a spreadsheet, you know, your login info, all that stuff, what it, what it's associated with, what website, all that good stuff. Keep track of all that stuff, guys. So you're going to need an account uh, before you can ever even really start the business listing process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in really quickly with, um, one of my accounts and then I'll, I'm going to walk you through the process of setting up a listing. I'm going to hit pause really quickly just so that uh, my email and account don't go out everywhere. So I'll be right back here. Okay, so we're back and what I've done is I've, um, you know, pretend that you've created a brand new account. All I've done is gone back to google.com forward slash business. So I'm at Google My Business and I've logged in uh, with the account that I just created. And what we're going to want to do is um, 
we are going to create a storefront, okay? So in, in the first set of videos, we're gonna be talking about people who have physical locations. People, um, you have the ability to go out and get an address, um, your client has an address, all that good stuff. Um, we'll, we'll do some demonstrations later about service areas where people you know, uh, deliver the service to a person at their location. For now, we're gonna be talking about um, what Google now refers to as a, st as a storefront, which really is anything. Um, they say restaurant, retail store, hotel, whatever, but it really could be anything, any type of business like a CPA firm, a lawyer, um, you know, any place where somebody comes to see you um, where you're not going to see them. That's what you're gonna to wanna to choose when you have a physical address. So you click on storefront. It's going to make you um, look for my for a business basically. So let's make up a business name really quickly. Let's just search for uh, by business name and address and let's come up with something where it's not likely to have um, an actual business name. So let's say, um, let me just hit pause real quickly and I'll come up with something here. Okay, so I typed in personal injury law center, Los Angeles. What I wanna do is go, let's start with one of the hardest things that you could possibly um, go after, okay? Just to kind of give you an idea of what to do. And you're gonna follow these steps no matter what the business is. I don't care if it's a restaurant, it's a bakery, it's a bar, it's a, a CPA firm, it's a lawyer, uh, it's a dentist, it doesn't matter. Um, you're gonna type in the name of the business and uh, the city, and then we're gonna hit search. And it's going to go out and figure out, okay, is there anything that is, does it resemble anything out there? And Personal Injury Law Center Los Angeles resembles the Los Angeles Injury Law Center. But that's not my business, right? So let's say that this is the name of the business I'm working with, or it could even be one that I came up with for um, quote unquote branding purposes to be able to do paper lead with, where I'm actually f creating a fictitious business uh, to be able to get ranked on maps. It really doesn't matter. So Google's gonna go out and do its job and just say, hey, is this, is this you? And you're gonna say, no, this doesn't match. Add your business. So all we're gonna do at this stage of the game is we're going to create a business listing. Um, and all we do is we're gonna put in our business name exactly as it is, okay? So you want to use the name as it, as it is in real life. Um, if it's a, a client-based business, they're obviously going to have a real name. Um, there's some debate about whether you should use their actual um, corporate name, for instance, versus, say, a DBA. So a lot of businesses will have a corporate name and then they'll do business as something else. You want to use whatever their real world business is, what, what they're known as in the real world. So let's say that the Los Angeles Personal Injury Center um, is really, you know, Brian Willie, uh, comma, PC, um, personal corporation or professional corporation. Um, but I do, I'm doing business as the Los Angeles Personal Injury Law Center. I, I'm going to want to say Los Angeles Personal Injury Law Center, not Brian Willie PC, although I could use that, okay? But in general, you're going to want to use whatever the real world name is. So you'd enter in right here the name of the business, the actual street address. Now, this is very important. If they have a street address, this you're going to want to start the process off right. Um, and we'll talk about this when we get to the citations video. But you want to make sure that the address is absolutely correct, okay? Um, so let me just give you a quick example. Let's go over to maps.google.com. And what I wanna do is I wanna show you what we, would, what we would do. Let's say this is an actual client and I'm gonna go rank them. Los Angeles, I think it was Injury Center something like that. Give this a second to load, guys. It'll just be a second here. Okay, so there's the Los Angeles Injury Center. Um, 
And what we're gonna to wanna to do is we wanna make sure that we take this exact address. So let's pretend this is our business. I would pick up this exact address as it's displayed in maps, right? So let's talk about something really quickly that I'm sure you've heard before if you've done any kind of maps work. Um, everything matters, okay? Every, every detail matters in maps whether it says W versus West, whether it says W period for the word West, whether it says uh, Fifth Street with the number five and TH versus fifth spelled out or street with or without a period or street S-T-R-E-E-T. -E -E you get the point. All that stuff starts to matter when you do citations. Um, and we'll talk about citations that they really have to match very, very closely or Google gets a little thrown off. Um, and in some cases can get very thrown off to the point where you won't ever rank. So I like to start off right. So I'm, again, we're pretending I have a client based business that I, so I'm doing client SEO for somebody. They're going to have a physical address. I want to look them up on maps. If they're not on maps, I want to look up their address on maps and I want to see how maps actually displays the address. So let's assume that they're not even on maps. I would just type in the address. 633 West 6th Street, however I think it should be spelled out. So let's say the client tells me, hey, it's, you know, my address is 633 West, W-E-S-T, 5th Street, S-T-R-E-E-T. -E -E I type that in. Google is most likely going to correct me and tell me what it thinks it should be displayed at, which is this, 633 West 5th Street, Los Angeles, California. I always want to start with that as my um as my starting point essentially. So I would, I would copy that directly from maps and I'd come over here and I'd have, you know, in our case, we're talking, we're calling it the Los Angeles personal injury law center. And I would make damn sure that every detail matches that that's my, uh, that's my exact listing right here. So I actually, you know, need to go back here and um, I would add it here, Los Angeles, I can spell this correctly. Obviously state, California, zip code. Uh, zip code was 90071. We're gonna wanna add that. Main business line. You're gonna wanna add the main business line for your your client. Um, it's, you know, obviously it's, it's just intuitive. You're going you're gonna to do that, right? We're going to talk about ways to get around that and, and some ways where I think you should get around it if you can talk your client into it. And obviously, if you have a paper lead site or a lead gen site of any sort, you're going to want to do it differently. So anyway, you know, you're going to enter the phone number in. What we're going to do is we're going to enter a category. And we always want to do our most... Um, our broadest kind of category that's going to be our main category. So if personal injury lawyer exists, which it does, I'll just start to type in and it says personal injury attorney. Um, and I would do that, right? So, and it's going to say, I deliver goods and services to my customers at their location, important information. And the reality is you don't in this case, it's a physical address. It's not a service-based business. We're going to do this later where we, we show you how to do a service-based business. For now, you would not check that box. So you'd have a phone number, you'd have a business name, you'd go through this whole process, you'd choose one category at this point. Um, we're going to get into categorization and how you need to be able to choose all the different types of categories that are important for your client's business. But for now, when we're getting to the point of just adding the listing so that we can get verified, we just choose one category. And I'm not gonna go through all the steps because I don't really have the business name or the phone number, but all I'm gonna do is hit continue. It's gonna take me to another page and it's gonna ask me to verify the listing or it's gonna basically say I'm gonna, that Google's gonna send out a postcard and it'll give me the opportunity to uh, put it to somebody's attention, for instance. So let's say I'm working with Joe Smith at the personal injury, Los Angeles Personal Injury Law Center, and I want to make sure it goes to Joe Smith. It's going to give me the opportunity to do that. So essentially, before I hit send the postcard, 
it'll say, you know, do you want to want to put it to somebody's attention? If you want to do that, you do that. Okay. And what's going to happen is it'll say, um, you know, the postcard has been sent, watch for it in the next one to two weeks. And you need to warn your client to watch for it and what it looks like. Sometimes I'll take a little screenshot of what they look like. And you want to make sure that your client is on top of things. Um, because what you what you need to do is we have to verify the listing by entering in a code that's going to arrive inside of that postcard. Once we come back in to our Google My Business dashboard, we'll have to enter that code to make that listing live. Um, so that's a very important step. Don't skip that step. Make make certain that your client is aware that uh, the postcard's coming. Uh, when we get to the troubleshooting videos, I'm going to tell you some stories that I've gone through of uh, clients not receiving postcards, why they didn't receive them, how we corrected the situation. Um, and a lot of times it's just Google is out of whack. They just, you know, it's not picking up something. It's not recognizing the address correctly, even though it took even though it tells you on the front end that it did, even though it says it sent a postcard, postcard never arrives. You can try it two and three times, won't arrive. And I'll show you some of the problems that we that we face and how to fix those in the troubleshooting videos. So that's really it. Um, for a physical address, that's all you've got to do. You've got to sign in, go to this page, um, you know, search for your business. And, you know, if it doesn't exist, it'll show you related businesses that kind of sound similar. Um, make sure that you go out to Google Maps and you type in the address that your client gave you and use the exact um, way that Google spelled it out. So again, if Google, if your client told you it was spelled out West F-I-F-T-H Street, uh, but Google saying W and the number 5 T-H Street, Use what Google tells you because that's going to tie into our ability to get the listing live quicker um, and our ability to start building citations to that listing faster. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that in the citation video, but we're going to we're only going to start building citations once we have a live listing that we know is the correct address. OK, we know it's the one that we entered into the dashboard. And it's the one that's showing up on the actual Google Live listing. And I'll show you that in the next video. Um, because we're wasting our time if we're building citations to something that Google displays that's incorrect. And Google does display addresses incorrectly from time to time. Um, so we want to, you know, and when I say incorrectly, I mean you enter it one way in the dashboard and it spits out on the other end on the live listing differently than we entered it on the dashboard, differently than we know it to be. So we have to build citations to the live listing. Um, so we'll talk more about that, but really that's it for this video and we will uh, see you in the next one. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so from now on, what we're going to be doing in the coming videos dealing with physical address locations um, where you're working with actual clients or really it could be any situation where you're able to obtain an actual physical address. Um, you would follow the same steps. Um, I'm going to actually show you a, a site that I set up um, and have ranked on maps. And the only reason I'm willing to show this site is it's kind of a dormant site for me. Um, I'm not really doing anything with it. It was a uh, originally developed for a client of mine who practices in a different practice area. And we were going to do a bunch of family law stuff for him. And then he decided he did not want to do that. So we ended up, you know, getting him ranked. Now we haven't got him ranked as highly as we normally would uh, just because he's kind of abandoned the site. And um, so I'm able to show you this as an example. I don't I don't like showing a lot of client sites, but this is going to really give you a really good idea of what happens, how to optimize a listing, um, you know, all the steps we take really for a very uh, competitive search term. So, you know, if pretty much any listing that you're going to do other than maybe like a personal injury term or something like that is going to be less competitive than what I'm going to show you. This is really competitive. 
Um, so the keyword is Irvine Divorce Attorney. So it's basically Irvine, California. Again, I showed you an earlier example of Orange County, California, population um, 3 million plus. Irvine has around 300,000 people. It's actually one of the top 50 cities in the United States by population. Excuse me. So very large, uh, large city, very large competitive city. Divorce, again, very competitive. Irvine has a lot of freaking money, I'll tell you that. Um, you are sitting down near... Um, you know, the beach, essentially, like near the Pacific Ocean, near Newport Beach. Uh, Irvine is very expensive. It's hard to get a house for less than about $900,000 to a million dollars there. A lot of money there. Great place to be, obviously, if you are a family law attorney. So my point is, is that this is ultra competitive. You can just look at AdWords. You could even, you know, get into the AdWords keyword tool and you'll see that the the bid prices or suggested bid prices are just through the roof. Um, and so my point is, is that this is a good case study. It's, it's actually good for me be, to be able to, to use this site to train you with because pretty much most of the things you're going to do are going to be less competitive than, than this. Let's put it that way. Um, any kind of service-based business, any contractors, almost anything is going to be easier to rank than what I'm about to show you. This took a while. Um, I'm not going to lie. This wasn't, you know, some overnight deal where I put up a site or I put up a maps listing and boom, it was ranked. This is one of those ones where it is definitely the blended algorithm and you have to be on top of your game. So really quickly, before we get into the listing itself and what to do once you receive the postcard, I'm going to show you some just some early results, you know, or so I shouldn't say early. Again, the site's been up a while. But so Irvine divorce attorney, you know, probably the top search term for Irvine and anything related to family law. If I type in Irvine divorce attorney, there's my site number two in the th in the three pack. Um, there's a video that I've ranked number two just below Yelp. So that's two listings I have. And then we get down here to number nine. I've got a third position. So really out of you know, let's say 13 positions. If you count maps and 10 organic positions, I've got three of them and I could do even more. You know, I could have a Yelp listing. I could have cita other citation sources showing up. I could have more videos. Um, so the point is, is that you can really own a lot of real estate and not only impress your clients, but you know, it'll, it'll keep them around longer because their phone rings more. Really, they start to see to be seen as uh, a trusted kind of authority because they keep getting seen over and over again. It's like, oh, OK, here's Red Hill Family Law. Here's a video about Red Hill Family Law. Here's Red Hill Family Law's site. You know, it, they start to be seen as an authority. And normally, again, if this was a site that I really cared about, um, I'd work on it a lot more and I would move it way up, you know, into positions one through three. I will tell you that it gets harder and harder organically to get into some of these positions because since the Google Pigeon update where um, they have changed the way that local listings are displayed, they really tend to favor directory style sites at the top. What's really cool though is sometimes I'm able to get videos on top of maps. Um, every once in a while I can get an organic site on top of maps. Um, and, you know, it's not impossible by any means to get your organic listing above Yelp and above lawyers.findlaw, Justia, stuff like that. But these are the prominent players, at least in the legal field. So just know that. So I'm not showing you this to brag. I'm just telling you the possibilities of you know, what we can do here. I've got three out of 13 positions on page one. And I could do even better than that if I was even trying. And I'm not even trying to do anything with the site at all. Um, so essentially, from now on for physical locations, we're going to be using this as the case study. So I showed you, you know, Los Angeles Personal Injury Law Center, mostly to show you how to add a new listing. Because if I tried to show you with this site, it's going to say that it already exists, right? So... What we're going to do now is we're going to pretend that this is our new listing. I've just set it up. 
I've got my postcard back in the mail with my code and I would have this little dashboard. I'd go back to google.com uh, forward slash business, logged into my uh, email that I set up. And all we're gonna do is there's gonna be a little spot to claim the listing, to verify the listing. You're gonna have to enter the code and it's going to tell you it's now verified once, once that's all done, okay? Um, the first thing that I like to do is, you know, you go into the edit field and I like to make sure that the address has remained the same from what I actually set it up as. I've seen it, I've seen it actually change uh, over time. Like from the time you set up the listing to the time you go back to the listing to verify it, sometimes it changes. Um, if it changes, you know, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna look on maps to see how maps displays this. You know, does maps, let's, let's just test it really quickly. So, 38 Corporate Park. And I'll just type in Irvine, California. What I want to see is, you know, does this match the how Maps displays it? Does it say Park or does it say PK, for instance? Does it say CA or does it say California? So notice it does say Irvine CA. In here it says Irvine, California. Now, that's okay. It's, it's not the end of the world. It could be when I set up this listing that I actually spelled out the word, the word California instead of putting CA. You know, in other words, maybe I didn't check it closely enough on maps to see how it was spelled out. Definitely not the end of the world. Um, when it comes to things like states and state abbreviations, Google recognizes that pretty well. Where it gets a little confused is park versus PK, or if it says PK and you've, you've got a, a, a period after it and it doesn't on maps somehow. You might want to correct that. Now, you may run into some snags because every once in a while it'll ask you to re-verify if you go into the edit field, though not always. So sometimes you can edit slight variations of the address without verification. Um, and I would probably do that. You know, I'm not going to do that here because I've got citations built and everything else, so I'm not going to worry about it. It's already ranking. Um, if this was a brand new listing that I'm just coming in to claim, and it said California versus CA, I might try to edit that and just say, you know, change it to CA to match what Maps is saying, you know, it believes is the true address. And it believes the true address is Irvine comma CA, not California. So I'm not gonna worry about it just because this one is already ranking. You might worry about it and actually try to change that to, to the state abbreviation CA. Um, and you're going to want to test it. If it makes you re-verify it, then you don't want to do it, okay? Um, and the only way to know that is once you go down here, you're going to be you're going to hit done editing. If it takes you somehow to a re-verification page, I'd go back up and try to re-edit it back to what it said, California. Um, so just keep in mind that addresses matter. The way they're spelled out really, really matters. Um, let's see. The thing that... I would not be concerned about is more and more Google recognizes number 30, like in this case, number 31 as the same thing as suite 31. So let's say that my client gives me the address of 38 corporate park suite 31. Um, I can use number 31 because Google often will use number 31. Now I'm not gonna be able to pull it up on maps because it's a suite within a building, <clears throat> but just know that sometimes Google will um, interchange those two, number and suite, and it's okay to do that. I would suggest you stick with one, however, when it comes time to citation build. Um, if you, if you know, in your main listing, you end up with number 31, you wanna build your citation to that. And really quickly, I'm gonna show you the live listing. So I'm gonna type in Red Hill Family Law Irvine, and I'm gonna look for the live listing. Okay, so here it is right here. And um, 
Notice it's saying 38 Corporate Park, same as inside of the listing, number 31, not, not Suite 31, Irvine, CA 92606. So this is matching my dashboard listing. That's what we want. When it comes time to build citations, I'm going to build to this. And this is what I refer to as the live listing, meaning that once I verified and once this starts to show up on Google, I want to build to this address, right? Um, not necessarily what's in here. So I've got Irvine, California notice inside of the actual listing. It's saying Irvine CA right here. So I would probably want to build to this exact listing. When I say build, I mean all my citations get number 31 Irvine CA. So let's say that this said Suite 31 in here, Irvine, California spelled out. And here it's saying number 31 Irvine CA. This is the listing that we always want to build to. So in other words, we don't ever want to start our citation building. And people will tell you differently until we're verified, until we see a live listing, because we don't know how it's going to be displayed. Um, and we want to make sure that we're building exactly to what Google is displaying to that live listing, which, by the way, happens to coincide and match, match with what is on Maps. So if I went to Maps over here and I typed in Red Hill Family Law Irvine, Let's see what it says. So same thing right here. Irvine CA 92606. So notice that all matches. So my live listing has been verified. That's what I'm going to build to. Very important that we don't start that process early. A lot of people will say, hey, as soon as you, as soon as you build your listing, you're good to go. Start building citations to it. No, I wouldn't do that because oftentimes... Google's live listing is going to change from how you've displayed it in here. And we want everything to match the live listing. Very, very, very important. Uh, keep that in mind, okay? So continuing along, once we have um, once we have verified our listing, we're we're in good shape at that point. We need to start the process of making sure that everything's correct. Um, pretty much when we first started, we had business name, address, phone number. Um, I don't even believe website URL is an option when you are submitting. I can't remember now, but I think that they don't even ask for that info right up front. And recall that they did ask for one category. In the example, it was personal injury attorney. In this example, I would have put divorce lawyer as my one category. So what I'm going to want to do is come in here and I'm going to want to exhaust every possibility um, of what my categories are. So divorce lawyer would be my primary category. And what I would do is I would do it based on probably search volume. I would go into the AdWords keyword tool um, or the planner, uh, old habits die hard, the keyword planner. And I would look for, you know, what gets searched the most? Irvine divorce lawyer, Irvine family law attorney. And I do know that divorce lawyer, Irvine divorce lawyer gets searched more. So, you know, I can try other things, you know, like is divorce attorney an option? No, it's not. Um, you know, I would, I would look for all sorts of um, synonyms of what it is they do. What practice areas do they cover? What are some synonyms you know, that could be related, related to divorce or other um, sort of sub niches within family law. So child support would be one of them. So I would type in child support, not available, right? Child custody lawyer, not available. So here's the thing. We used to be able to, in the old dashboards, uh, when it was Google plus local, and I think even going back to Google uh, Places, we could enter custom categories. We would essentially add our own stuff and we could go for days. You know, we could add 10 or 15 different categories. And there were some rules around that. And now you don't worry about that at all. You, you have to pick what they give you and it's pre-filled out. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to auto-complete it for you. So if I type in divorce, that's my primary thing, it gives me two choices, divorce lawyer or divorce service. And that's it. 
So I don't have the option for divorce uh, attorney. So notice if I typed in family law and it completes it for me, attorney. Obviously, I'm going to select that, and I have. Um, if I type in just lawyer, what do I see? You know, I see lawyer. So that's an option. I would probably, not probably, I did and definitely would type that in. Um, let's type in law. So this is also a law firm. So I would add law firm to that. Let's type in attorney and see what my choices are. Well, he's not a bankruptcy attorney. He's not a criminal justice, not a district attorney. I'd go through all of these. Well, he's a family law attorney. Well, I've already done that. So basically, you get the point. You're going to go through every sort of um, iteration of what makes sense. He's not an attorney referral service. Um, you know, basically until you've exhausted every possible category and you want to make your primary the category that you want to display the most. <coughs> Excuse me, based on search volume, essentially. And I'm going to show you some tricks of how we correlate these categories to our website where basically we want our listing um, to, and people think I'm crazy sometimes when I talk like this, until they try it. I've had people actually tell me, that sounded crazy, Brian, until you told, <laughs> until you told me to do this. Um, I'll refer often to sort of the website talking back and forth to the listing. And all I mean by that is that we're going to exactly match aspects of the website with the listing because it, it sends signals to Google that um, this is a viable listing. This is, you know, the categories match pages on the website, for instance. Uh, the address exactly matches what's on the website. And all it's doing is it's sending all these targeted signals back and forth from the website to the maps listing to tell Google this is a viable listing, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So until I've exhausted every category, I'm going to keep going until I find more and more. You know, I might type in more law-related stuff. So it's not a law school. I've already got lawyer. I've already tried attorney, law firm. You know, nothing else really matches. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to hit save, and I've exhausted all of my categories. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we want to enter an accurate set of hours. Um, this is going to matter tremendously for um, accuracy across all third-party citation sources. Pretty much every citation order that you'll place will ask for the business's hours. So it all starts here. You want to get them correct. So in this case, it's 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Close Sunday, close Saturday. I know la uh, lawyers are lazy bastards. Uh, I am one, so I can say that. So um, so you want to add that here. I mean, it's self-explanatory. Just add it and move on. But eventually, we're going to want that to match all of our citation sources across the board. Okay, so mostly, I, I guess probably one of the most important things is the introduction. Um, this is the area where it's kind of like the description section. And this is what's going to allow us to get in our LSI keywords, latent semantic index or indexing keywords. Really, all those are, if you're not familiar, is um, Google has moved to the uh, semantic web. It, it uses, it basically takes main keywords and it's looking for synonyms, it's looking for other uh, words that would occur in connection with something. So like family law, you'd expect to see things like uncontested divorce. You'd expect to see child support in relation to family law. Uh, divorce, you'd expect to see things like child custody, child support, family law. So the way that the web works now is that Google expects to see relationships between keywords which is why it's very important on your on your own website to have articles that are written um, that contain all of these LSI keywords because Google chooses which results to serve up, not just based on what we tell it. 
So it's great that we have our title tags that say, you know, uh, Irvine Divorce Lawyer. But if we want to show up for a lot of other things, it's very important to have thematic relationships between keywords, between websites, um, between the way that we link out to websites, all these different things. Um, so, you know, we'll get a little more into Google you know, indexing things based on semantic relationships in a little while here. But just know that this is your opportunity to do things, uh, to add some extra information here. So a couple words of caution. Um, there have been, you know, lots of people out there that say, hey, it's fine to kind of keyword stuff here and, you know, reuse your your main city and reuse your categories inside your description. <clears throat> Be very, very careful. Um, don't do that. It's really not a good idea to be doing that at all. You're already, you've already told, think of, think of your, your maps listing like a website. Would you over optimize your website? No, this is 2015. You know, this is not 2010. You just don't do that. So we've already, they already know where the hell our, our location is because we've told them it's in Irvine, California. They know our business name. <clears throat> they know our main areas of practice because we've told them that in our category listings. So we don't need to repeat them in our introduction. All that's going to do is give you a higher potential to get your, uh, your listing taken down. I've seen it happen. So don't repeat your city, don't repeat your categories in your introduction. Use your introduction as an opportunity to, number one, introduce people. I know that sounds funny. You know, give a description of what your business does, but use it as an opportunity to do two things. Get LSI keywords in there and get some um, county and some surrounding city information in there, okay? So you can see what I did. I actually used it a little bit differently. So let's give you an example here. One of my categories was lawyer, right? Did I repeat the word lawyer? No, I said lawyers in here. So uh, let's see, experienced lawyers, not lawyer, at Red Hill Family Law. It's okay to repeat your business name. Handle both contested and uncontested divorce. LSI keyword, LSI keyword. So Divorce is not one of my categories. Divorce lawyer is. Divorce services. Divorce is not. But from an LSI perspective, Google's going to expect to see things like contested, uncontested. Oh, by the way, child support, child custody, um, and other family law matters in and around the Orange County, California area. Notice how I'm trying to get that county in there. That county has 3 million people. So even though Irvine sits within Orange County, I can't say it's in Orange County, California. Orange County is not a city. It's not a physical location. It's located in Irvine. But I want to try to rank for things like Orange County, California at some point. And then I'll do things like surrounding areas, Newport Beach, Mission Viejo, Costa Mesa, Laguna Beach. Now, I will tell you with, you know, this is easier to pull off when you have surrounding unincorporated cities. So in this case, I'm not likely to show up in Newport Beach because that's an incorporated city. Mission Viejo has it's it's an incorporated city, meaning that, you know, if I typed in Mission Viejo divorce attorney, it's going to show me people located in Mission Viejo. Where it does work is surrounding areas that tend to be unincorporated, meaning that they're not they're just little areas in and around town, in and around Irvine. So I've got a client. You know, I'm not going to tell you what city. It's a very, very large top 10 city in the U.S. where surrounding areas, a bunch of them are unincorporated. And in the description, I use unincorporated cities, you know, also serving this city and this city and this city. And I don't stuff them. I, I choose four or five selectively based on population, uh, often based on, um, you know, what's what's the affluent the affluency level of the surrounding area. You know, we, we want higher quality um, potential clients calling in. So that's how I base this. So I'm getting LSI keywords, counties. I'll get one or two counties if I can, um, and then some surrounding areas, and I'll end it, and that's it. Now, you can, you can really go on and on for quite a while 
and that's okay. So you can add a lot more here if you have a lot to say or a lot of LSI keywords. You know, I encourage you to actually do that if you want. Add another full paragraph or two paragraphs. I don't remember what the character limit is. Feel free to, you know, don't keyword stuff, okay? That's the key. Just do not keyword stuff. Use LSI keywords. Use other practice areas. I'm going to show you how I did this successfully real quick before we come back here, and I'm going to show you some of these tricks here. Um, let me type in Irvine child custody attorney. Sorry, my computer is being very slow. It'll correct it for me. I spelled that incorrectly, but it, uh, Google would will correct that. It's just going really freaking slow right now. So I apologize. Okay, so notice how I'm in. I'm number one for Irvine child custody attorney. Now that's not by accident. It's for a couple different reasons. Um, the first reason is I've put that I that you know the firm practices child custody here and I'm going to show you another reason in a little while why it shows up and it has to do with the category matching a page on the website and we'll get into that in a different video okay but just know that this is a very very lucrative term uh, for a family law attorney child custody I mean it's an awful thing people going through child custody if you're a divorce lawyer it's a very lucrative thing because people will spend any amount of money to make sure that they get custody of their kids they will go crazy and spend a lot of money so I'm the number one person for this term I can't remember if I'm ranked even at all on the site here's my video again I mean I'm sorry on the page here's my video again and I'm not really ranked on the page again I'm not really working on this website at all but notice Starting with my listing, and I'll show you tricks on the website, I'm able to show up for something that wasn't a category at all, right? Child custody was not a category. Simply because I have it here and the way that I have my website structured, which I'll show you in a minute. So in our introduction, we also have an opportunity to link out. I would do a couple things. And in fact, I would probably do them a little differently now. Um, Facebook is obviously seen as a, um, you know, a very trusted social platform that, you know, it's good to link out there. I would probably, I'd probably still put Facebook here. Um, I would almost always put a link to YouTube. And what I want to do is, is talk to you a little bit about really quickly, and we're, we'll get back into this in a future video, um, uh, Google social data hub partners and it's basically these are these are Google um, they're not necessarily Google properties but it's it's other sites that Google considers to be social data hubs so we have Google right here on their own web page saying to developers these are important sites right so I'm going to use that to the max now what I would do for the most part one thing that's not showing up here that's probably the ultimate Google partner is blogger and YouTube right so I would set up a blogger account and a, you know a blogger um, site and a YouTube account which I've done and I've basically said see our YouTube video here now what, what I haven't done is say see our blogger um, blog site here or something like that I would create that and set that up here why because Google tells me right here that those things are important so you might also have a link out to Digo or something like that, um, which is just a bookmarking site or delicious a bookmarking site. Um, I wouldn't overdo it necessarily, but you can have three or four or five links out. But I would use only uh, Google owned properties, Blogger and YouTube are owned by, by Google. And then I might put something like Facebook because it has such high social authority. I might put something, one more, like a, like a Digo or a delicious or something like that and you know create an account and link over to that account right from my page um, right in my description so it seems obvious most people don't do that right away that's going to give you some level of authority 
uh, because you're doing exactly what Google tells you to do. I, I use this example all the time with YouTube where when we upload a YouTube video, um, Google immediately wants us to share that YouTube video and it in fact tells us all the properties that we should be sharing it on. And most people completely ignore that. You know, there's like eight or 10 or 12, I forget, properties that Google says, hey, you should be sharing this on these properties. And they're, t they're flat out telling you what to do. The social data hub partners, it's flat out telling you what to do. And I'm going to show you some cool ways how we're going to use this in the advanced training section uh, to get over some hurdles by using the semantic web, by creating these properties, interlinking these property, properties um, the right way, and using it as massive authority, massive trust signals to get our maps rankings listed. So that's really it for setting up the listing, guys, at this point. Um, we're gonna talk further about photos in an entirely different video. That's a whole different animal. Uh, not enough time to cover it in this video. But basically, you are done at that point. Um, you, you know, once you've added your, your description the way you want it and everything else, and add those Data Hub partners. I'll try to drop a link to the Data Hub section uh, under the video so you can see what to link to. But again, don't overdo it. You know, you don't need 10 links, but I would choose Facebook, YouTube, Blogger, and one or two others, maybe Digo and Delicious, for instance and link out to those. Sorry, I've got another video completing here as I record a video. <laughs> um, so that's it for this video, guys. Um, I will see you over in the next video and we'll continue the process. Take care. Okay, so welcome back. Um, this is probably one of the most important uh, videos that you're gonna watch in this entire series. Um, we're gonna be talking about the importance of geotagging photos. So you'll hear me over and over again talk about um, how we want our, you know, our site and our photos and related websites and all these different things to directly interact and really send geographic signals back to the, the Google Maps listing that you know, all these things tie together. This is what these things are about. So photos obviously are important to Google. They give you a lot of room to add photos and there's a reason that they do that. Um, they want you know people to be able to obviously see a lot of photos related to your listing, but you know they allow us to do a lot of different things with our photos, um, including geotagging. So geographic tagging of a photo very 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 important. Um, again, it's going to allow us to do a number of different things. Uh, not only use these on our website, which will in turn you know, again, there's no other way of putting this, but sort of talk back and forth with the maps listing, which is also going to contain um, these geotagged photos. And so those two will match each other. Um, I'm also going to show you a trick where we're going to upload this to the online version of Picasa, a web album in Picasa, which you guessed it is going to talk back and forth to the maps listing. Um, we'll then use these photos later on when we place citation orders. Uh, oftentimes when we're when we're doing citation building to our maps listing, more often than not, they allow us to to send several photos that will be uploaded. And uh, you guessed it again, those photos will have that exact same geotagged information. So all over the web, we're, we're going to have these these areas that have our photos that precisely match our maps listing. So with geotagging, you know, what we're not doing is we're not just saying, hey, yeah, this is a photo I uploaded and it's in Irvine, California. We're getting very specific down to latitude, longitude, the geo coordinates that are going to be embedded in the picture itself. So really quickly, I'll show you. Um, this is what it's called. It's called EXIF um, format, um, exchangeable image file. And it, it sort of originated with digital cameras where digital cameras would automatically embed the, this information into photos, things like you know um, the date it was taken, the type of camera, the lens, and geo coordinates. And so what we're able to do here is we're able to take photos that we didn't really take on a digital camera, maybe they're stock images, maybe they're ones that were just sent to us about the business, 
and we're going to geotag those. Um, so we don't care about all the other stuff related to, you know, the EXIF format. We're more concerned with the, um, the geo coordinates. So to get started with this, um, notice that, you know, this is a, a photo that, <laughs> that I just uh, pulled into Picasa. And basically all it's going to do is when you, when you download Picasa 3, it's just a, a, a desk, desktop based app essentially and it's going to connect with your photo albums and it's going to show on the left hand side your photo library all the way down every photo that you have and so what i what i recommend is just have an album of all the photos you're going to be using for this maps listing so it's very handy ready to go and let me just show you what that album looks like right now so here here's what i have in there right now you can see these are both stock images Okay, so here's the image that you saw that's, you know, pulled into Picasa. And I want to show you something really quickly and how this is going to change. If I right click on this photo uh, with a Mac, I'm not exactly sure how you do it, but there's going to be a way to view the properties of the photo. What I want to do is right click and view properties. And I want to go to details. So this is going to be whatever, um, you know, I purchased this from Dreams Time. And it's just going to have whatever data was in there. In this case, really not too much. Just copyright information that it's from Dreams Time. Um, but what I want you to see is if you scroll down, you know, it says EXIF version. But there's really no geodata in there. There's no latitude, longitude, any of that that exists at this point. So we're going to change that. I'm going to show you it's really actually very easy. So in Picasa, when you see your, your album that you want, click on the album, click on the photo, it's gonna bring the photo to this the screen where you see it right now, okay? And down here on the bottom right, there's a bunch of different choices. Just click on the pin um, so that it's, you know, obviously pin is related to, to maps and geolocation. Um, all we're gonna do is search for our exact address from our maps listing, okay? So in this, in this case, it's 38 Corporate Park, Irvine, California. Hit search. Now it'll say, put photo here, just hit OK. We don't know at this point if it's accurate or not. We're going to check it. We're going to hit OK. And what I want to do is I want to do a couple things. I want to zoom in right from this little um, tab up here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just keep zooming in until we recognize the building. You know, we want to make sure that it dropped the pin on the actual building. And we know, or I know anyway, that this is the building. It's not going to really tell you that this is 38 Corporate Park um, or that this is accurate. But in most cases, it's highly, highly accurate. So it's going to be basically place a pin here at 38 Corporate Park. And what it's done is it's now automatically geotagged that photo. Um, and I'm going to prove it to you really quickly. So this web-based app interacts with our uh, pictures in our file folders where once we geotag it, I'm going to go back here and show you the difference. Notice this one's not geotagged. It has a little green dot here. This one's been geotagged. It has an orange dot. And I can prove it right now just by going back to the property section, details, and if I scroll down, Look what appeared, GPS, latitude, longitude, okay? So that's very important. That's step one. And this, this by the way, is very helpful because it's going to geotag the photo um, inside of Picasa, but it's automatically going to update our photo that's sitting in our photo album because we're going to use this later to add additional information to and then um, finally upload that to our Maps dashboard and to our website in very specific places so that that sort of, you know, geographic talking back and forth is going to happen naturally. So in other words, once it's, once it's been geotagged in Picasa, you don't need to re-download this photo and save it back to your hard drive. This app interacts directly with your hard drive and the photos and automatically then turns this into a geotagged photo, okay? Now, the second thing we're going to do, very important, is that there's an online um, version of Picasa that allows you to organize web albums. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Tools and go to Upload. And it's going to say Upload to Google Photos. And this is just the name of the album that I have it in, so don't worry about that. Um, and I don't need to do anything else. I just want to hit Upload. And it's going to take me to a page where it's going to allow me to view online. I'm going to click that. If I'm not signed in, it's going to ask me to sign in. So let's see here. Let's give this a second. It may have taken me in over here actually already. Uh, hang on one second. This is spinning a little bit. Let's try this one more time here. This is getting a little bit stuck. I'm going to hit pause while this uploads and then I'll show you what happens. Okay, sorry about that. It was just uh, Firefox was freezing. I had to shut down and uh, restart that. So you can see what it did is uh, when I'm signed in, if I hit that that view uh, photo function right here, view online, it's going to automatically take me here to um, the online version of Picasa where basically web albums will be created. Your photo is going to be uploaded there essentially. And what I want to show you really quickly is we can we can check this very easily to see that it's been geotagged because I'm going to go to full details page when I'm on that photo. And notice right here it's called EXIF information. So here's all the EXIF information um, with the date and more importantly, you know, it was the software was Picasa, but here's what we want. We want the geo coordinates. So we know now that this thing has been tagged. I've shown you two different ways inside of the album. I showed you the properties where it was tagged and now we've uploaded it to Picasa and it's showing us that it's in fact been tagged. So I want to check this really quick. I want to cross reference it by going to maps.google.com and I'm going to actually put in these geo coordinates. So you always start with the latitude comma and then I'll grab the longitude here like that and then just hit search. Let's give this just a second and it should start to um, to zoom into our area. Okay, here we are. So you can see right there, there's that building again and you know if I really want I can zoom in and say okay well that's corporate park now it's not going to tell me the exact address at this point but the way that I can check this again I like to really cross-reference this stuff to make sure that my coordinates directly match with the address hit directions and it should tell you uh, should say the address 38 corporate park Irvine California uh, and it's going to show me the the actual place or maps listing or Google my business listing that's currently associated with that in your case if it's brand new it won't do that but it should show you the address at least so all I'm doing guys is I'm just cross-referencing the geo coordinates that I know to exist inside of the um, the image file itself over here with what I just uploaded to Picasa I'm going to grab that and just make sure that it ties out to the actual address that I'm trying to uh, rank on maps for. Um, so that's step one. That's the, that's the most important part. Now, the second thing I want to convey to you that people don't really realize is that by uploading it to the Picasso web album, it's basically um, taking that photo and putting that photograph on a domain authority 100 Google owned website. So let me repeat that. This is a domain authority 100 Google owned property. Do you think that might be a little bit important um, to sending these sort of geo signals back and forth to your maps listing? Answer, absolutely, right? We want to do things like use these data hub partners and, you know, have our photographs appear on things like Blogger. But, um, you know, one other spot that we can have it is in, in the Picasso web album. High domain authority, again, geo coordinates directly matching the geo coordinates of what we're going to eventually upload to our maps listing, which also ma matches uh, what's on your website. I'm going to show you how and where to add those photos in another video training. We can do other things like add them, you know, to other 
Google owned properties, like I mentioned. Um, Blogger, uh, for instance, we can upload, you know, one or more of these photos that again are going to directly tie out from a latitude longitude perspective back to our listing. Um, so there's, it's basically just another sort of um, way that we can communicate with our maps listing uh, and tell it that it's important and tell it that this is exactly precisely the spot where this photograph was taken. And by the way, it matches exactly precisely the data that happens to be in your maps listing. So I hope that makes sense. Um, don't, don't skip this upload step. So, you know, a lot of people will go to Picasa and they geotag the photo and they're done. You know, then they work on the photograph itself, upload it to the maps listing. Don't miss the step of just uploading, uploading this to your web album and make sure that it's there. Um, it's already going to have the data already in there. You don't need to do anything else at all with it. And at that point, we're, we're basically done with Picasa. We would then repeat the process, go back to the library, um, upload the next photo, make sure it's geotagged again to the exact same building. It's going to then appear in our photo, um, in, our, um, in our folder here as geotagged, go through the same process, check the properties, make sure that it's, um, you know, it has GPS information when you're done and uh, then follow the same steps. Upload it to Picasa online. And, you know, once it's there, you're going to just, um, let me show you one more time. Once it's, once the actual photograph is there, you wanna click on the photo that's inside of the album. It's gonna bring you to the actual photograph screen. You wanna click on full details. It's going to show us that there's EXIF information, that it's um, we've got the geocoordinates in there. Pop those into Google Maps, okay? And it should bring up the building. It should bring up that address and cross-reference it. And then when you're in Google Maps, after it's done that, hit directions and make sure that it takes you to the intended address. So it's just a way of cross-referencing everything, making sure everything's perfect. And you'd repeat that process, you know, as many as, I don't know, 10, 10 or more times, depending on how many photos you have. Um, so in the next video, I'm gonna show you how we're going to further increase this sort of signaling that I've talked about by adding additional data inside of the photo. Uh, so we already have the geotagged info. We're gonna add additional information in there um, that's going to help our, our stuff rank. So I'll see you over in the next video, thanks. All right, guys, welcome back to the second part of the uh, tagging training for photos. First part was geotagging. We wanted to get the coordinates in um, the actual picture, embedded into the picture, uh, which I showed you how to do. We've successfully done that. Now, what I'm going to assume here is that you've done that for all of your photos. So just keep them organized in one folder. Um, every photo that you have you know, it should be in one folder. And then when you go through Picasa and you geotag them, it'll automatically just send it back to the folder um, already geotagged. And then, you know, we, we talked about the second step, which is always uploading each photo to the online Picasa web album to get that Domain Authority 100 Google property working for you um, to send those signals, those trust signals, geographic signals back to your maps listing because your maps listing is going to contain the exact same photo embedded with the geo coordinates. Now we need to take um, some additional steps here. Okay. And I want to show you how to do this. Now for the sake of time, I've already done most of it. I'm going to show you how to do a couple of them and just show you, um, you know, the reasoning behind it and then what we're going to be doing with it in the future. So really quickly, what I like to do now is once I've geotagged all my photos, I'm going to go back into my listing um, and you know, the assumption here is that you've claimed the listing. You really haven't added photos yet. And we've, we've gone through and we've optimized our listing and done all the things we need to do. And what we did during part of the optimization process is we chose categories. We, we went through every single category that we can think of that might possibly relate to our business. And in my case, I came up with five divorce lawyer, family law attorney, lawyer, divorce service law firm. Um, I would jot those down in a spreadsheet or 
onto just a text file just so we can grab them if we want. So what we're going to be doing is to again further sort of send signals back to you know to our listing that you know we're we're serious and that everything matches. This is all about you know it in a word really or in a, in a sentence it's all about matching things right we're matching photographs with geographic signals now what I want to do is I want to match the naming convention of the photograph itself um, with my category listings and then we're going to take it a step further and I'm going to show you how we integrate those into the website um, you know to really really up the authority of our listing so we're gonna jot down all of our categories divorce lawyer family law attorney all that good stuff into a notepad and we're going to create image file names based on that okay so what I'm again what I'm assuming and what I'm doing you know for the sake of time here to not have to geotag every photo is none of these photos have been geotagged except the one that I showed you you know so if I go into into the property section of this particular photo that's the one I showed you that's been geotagged and we can see the info right here Everything else has not been. But what I'm going to do is I, I want a photo for every single category that I have. Um, and then I further want some additional photos for things that are not available in categories, but that might trigger a Google Maps listing. So let me show you an example. Notice that when I went through, the, through my category description, child support attorney was not an option. However, if I type in child support attorney Irvine, California, um, and you know, go to search tools and you can change the location where you're searching from. So you can use your location, I'm in Las Vegas, or I can search as though I'm in Irvine, California, which is what I wanna do. Child support attorney Irvine, California. So let's let this um, load. It's very frozen right now for some reason. Um, you notice that that pulls a maps listing, right? So your ability to get on maps and, and Google serving up a maps listing is not 100% dependent on the categories available. Um, those are just the overall, you know, categories that, that are available. We obviously want to use those to our maximum advantage, but what if I want to, you know, what if I wanted to get listed as on child support attorney Irvine, California? Well, I'm going to show you some cool little tricks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my my album right here, and one of these photos I would want to name child support attorney Irvine, California. So let's choose the one that we geo uh, we geo tagged. I'm just going to go to rename and I'm going to name it child support attorney Irvine, California. And don't worry if Google serves up variations of that, like Irvine child support attorney, Irvine child support lawyer, we're going to get, it's going to work just fine for that as well. So I'm going to name this, um, the name of, you know, additional non-category, non-category, um, keywords that I also would like to be, uh, you know, listed on maps for. Now, don't go crazy. Do your research because, as I mentioned, a lot of things just don't even pull a maps listing. There's no maps result. It just shows organic. So don't bother optimizing photos that don't even support a maps listing. So, in other words, check your, your research. If you know you wanted to rank for child support attorney, um, you would do that, okay? You would actually, you know, go to Google, check to see if a maps listing comes up. If so, we're going to want to do that. And I'm going to show you how we're going to use that to our advantage on our website. Um, so we don't have the opportunity to have it in categories, but we're going to have, we're still going to upload it to the maps listing, and then we're going to um, use it to our advantage on our website at a later time. So notice everything else really matches up with my other categories. Was divorce lawyer a category? Let's just go check. So if I come here, my first category, in fact, my default category is divorce lawyer. And then I have family law attorney. So I've got divorce lawyer, Irvine, California. So notice what I'm doing is I'm adding the category name plus the city name here in the um, to name the image, divorce lawyer, Irvine, California. Divorce service, Irvine, California. Uh, family law attorney, Irvine, California. So 
Divorce service was a category. Family law attorney, a category. Um, lawyer was a category. So I have lawyer Irvine, California. Um, now I've just created another one for child support attorney, Irvine, California, which was a non-category listing. And I just showed you why we're going to be doing that. Now the final one that we don't have, and I'm going to show you how how to do this as an example on this one, is law firm. I don't have one for law firm. You know, if you go down the list here, they're all named for other category names or non-category names. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and I want to click rename law firm Irvine, California. Okay, as soon as that's done, then I'm going to right click again and I want to go to properties. And I want to show you um, a couple of things that we're going to be doing. Um, grab the name here, just copy it, Law Firm Irvine, California. Because what we're going to do is go under details and we're going to strip out the uh, title and rename it Law Firm Irvine, California. We're going to, there is no subject, but we're going to name it Law Firm Irvine, California. Now, under comments, this is the most important part. Let me, let me just hit apply so this saves really quickly. Um, let's see what it's doing here. We'll just hit OK. Let me just make sure this still exists. And it's going to let me actually save that. I think it's trying to upload to Picasa or kind of go back and forth between Picasa. But let me just double check to make sure that's saved. It did. Law Firm Irvine, California. So what I'm going to do is on a notepad, I'm going to have handy my exact address from my citation. And I'll just show you really quickly because I've already done it inside one of these files. In the comments section, I have my citation right here. So I'm going to copy that. Click OK. I'm going to go over to the brand new file that we're trying to set up here, which was Law Firm Irvine, California. Right click, go back to properties. And again, the only thing you need to do is you need to have um, the file name. You know, so you rename the actual file itself, match the title and subject, Law Firm Irvine, California. And under comments, we want to have our... Um, basically what's going to become our citation. This is all of our information from inside of Google Maps. Uh, business name, Red Hill Family Law, 38 Corporate Park, Suite 31. I would actually probably change that to number 31 uh, just to be consistent with, with the listing itself. Remember we went through that where the listing was number 31. Irvine, California, 92606, and then my phone number, and that's it. I'm done, okay? Now, if we come down here, I th let's see, was this the one we geotagged? No, this was not the one that we geotagged. Um, this other one was. So the assumption is that you've already geotagged this, you know, just to, just to make sure you've got this clear, you've already geotagged these things. They're already in the folder. And once they're geotagged and uploaded to Picasa, you're going to come back to the folder and have, you know, at, at least enough photos to cover every category and then I would take it many steps further where I would do a bunch of research and figure out other related search terms that support or pull a Google Maps listing, like in this case, um, Child Support Attorney Irvine, California. And I'm going to use that to my advantage. I'm going to create a, a photo about that, Child Support Attorney Irvine, California. Now, you might be asking, okay, well, these are, you know, specific terms, child support, divorce lawyer, family law attorney, divorce service. You know, law firm's kind of generic. Lawyer's kind of generic. And you're absolutely correct. But I'm going to show you how we use this to our advantage on the website. And, you know, I'll give you a quick example here. I think I showed this maybe at the, in the intro video, but Irvine Child Custody attorney. Sorry this has taken so long. This browser is just being very slow today. So let's let this load for one second here. So notice I'm number one for uh, Irvine child custody attorney. I'm going to go down into the results. I don't think I'm listed here. Might be on page two. I just want to show you something really quickly. 
to drive this home. Let's see if I'm listed organically. I can't, I can't recall because I haven't done anything to this in so long. Okay, here we go. So let me just show you this really quickly and I'm going to show you in much more depth when we get to the actual uh, website itself. Um, ignore this whole spot. I haven't put any kind of uh, logo or anything like that. This is just a kind of a generic theme and actually a really good theme, by the way, that maybe I'll show you at some point, but don't, just ignore the logo. Um, normally that would say redhillfamilylaw.net, but notice what I did here on the website. Um, I have a category that's called lawyer uh, right here. So I know I'm able to use that category called lawyer. Well, what I wanted to do is I wanted to rank for child custody attorney, and I know that I don't have a category for child custody attorney. So I use this to my advantage by basically creating a page called lawyer that directly matches with my category listing called lawyer, which directly matches with my lawyer, Irvine, California photo. So notice I've got that photo right here, and it's just lawyer, Irvine, California. But it's wrapped around a page all about child custody. I'm title tagged for Orange County Child Custody Attorneys, Irvine, California Visitation Lawyers. That's just sort of a, a synonym LSI keyword of child custody. So all I'm doing here is I am using it to my advantage. I'm using the fact that, you know, lawyer is a very generic term. Law firm is a very generic term but I want to rank for something else on maps. In this case, I wanted to rank for um, uh, child, Irvine child custody attorney, and I did. And part of the reason I did was because I, I basically um, created all this content around this idea that my, my category of lawyer is really about child custody. So I hope that makes sense. I just used it to my advantage. And I'll show you more when we get into the website factors um, about how to create these pages to tie into your categories um, and how we can use the pictures to then tie back to the actual category itself, all those good things. So I know it doesn't fully make sense yet, but just keep that in mind that that's a way that I'm going to be able to rank for additional terms. So you're going to want to go, you know, obviously have your categories as pictures, but then I would go out and, you know, if there's 15 other places that are pulling a maps listing, I would want as many photos as Google allows me to upload all named as that, um, as the, as the keyword, you know, let's say that it's, um, alimony lawyer, Irvine, California. We know it's not a category inside of the maps listing, but maybe I want to rank for it. So maybe I have a photo that's geotagged and I name it um, alimony lawyer Irvine California right so the steps really are in order again um, geotag the photo in Picasa upload it to the online web album in Picasa to get that domain authority and sharing um, then inside of your folder it's already going to be all these photos will be in here geotagged start one by one with your category names so I've got divorce lawyer was my first category Click on, you know, right click on it, hit rename, Divorce Lawyer Irvine, California. Open up the properties, go to details. This should match. Divorce, this should be Divorce Lawyer. This is an earlier version that I did, which was Divorce Attorney. So I'm going to just type in Divorce Lawyer here. Divorce Lawyer Irvine, California. Hit apply. Hit OK. Now, if I come back in, it should say Divorce Lawyer Irvine, California, twice here, title and subject. Uh, we're going to assume that it's geotagged. It'd be down here in that information. Then what I want to do is just make sure that my um, citation is in there, basically the exact way that Google tells me it's supposed to be. So again, you know, I, this is from an earlier listing that I set up, but I would actually have this as number 31. Because recall that the live listing told me that it's, it believes it's called number 31. And details matter, not only at this stage of the game when we're tagging photographs, but it really matters at a later point. Let me just turn this off here. 
Um, it really matters at a later point when we're doing citations. We want it to directly match our maps listing. So I would just hit OK. So you would do that for every single photo. Make sure that your NAP information, name, address, phone number is in there. Start off with the, with the full business name exactly as it reads on Google. Move down line by line with the exact address spelled out the exact right way. Um, so hopefully that all makes sense. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about how we use these photos on our website. We're going to start to get into website optimization and the kinds of things that are necessary to uh, really kick up your results um, you know, uh, to a whole nother level. Um, so I'll see you over in the next video. Take care. Okay guys, welcome back. Now, um, in this video, we're in the inside of the WordPress admin panel for redhillfamilylaw.net. And what we're gonna be doing in this video is I'm gonna show you some things that we can do on our website, a number of things actually, that will help um, help tie the website back to the listing itself. So we're gonna get started here. One of the, one of the number one things that people overlook that can really, really help get your site um, ranked or get your, your maps listing ranked is the title tag. So normally, you know, you would have in an organic setting, you would have your keyword, your main keyword first, and maybe a, a secondary keyword next. For maps purposes, um, and really, you know, I, I'm gonna assume that you want all of your sites in maps, you know, an ideal way to structure a site is to have a home page that's sort of just a hub. It's really not there for any more than branding purposes, and that's really it. Now, I, I did not set that site up this way, but I'm gonna show you how you can set up the site that way. Or if you have an existing client that you're, you're working with who has an existing site, and you obviously you know, don't wanna change the, the title tags completely, uh, you'll be able to use this method as well. So let me show you what I mean. When we first get in to uh, the website, I'm gonna assume that you either have Yoast or All-in-One SEO Pack installed. If you don't know what those are, look them up. They're just SEO um, plugins that allow us to do things like title tags, uh, meta descriptions, all that good stuff, where that will show up you know, on, on this little tab right here, basically. Like if I'm on the home page and I click above here, that's the title tag. Um, for those of you not familiar with it, most people in SEO really understand that this is the, the main spot that you need to have your, your keywords and not you know stuffed versions of your keywords, but a proper title tag. This one's actually a little bit long, but you've noticed the site ranks just fine. It does very well in maps. Um, so in your site, step number one is going to be install Yoast or All-in-One SEO. Then we're gonna to wanna to create our title tag. Um, now, inside of All-in-One SEO, which I'm using, this is the main dashboard. And if you click on that, this is gonna control the home page setting. So again, two ways of doing this. My, my preferred method nowadays uh, bef that kinda of came about long after I created this site, the site's been around for a long time, is to create a branded website where my title tag might not contain any of these keywords. It wouldn't say Orange County Divorce Attorneys, Irvine Divorce Lawyers. I would do that in an inner page somewhere. It would just say Red Hill Family Law, um, so brand name, and then phone number. And then in some cases, zip code. If you're serving one physical location, again, imagine the the power of that. Imagine the fact that Google in your maps listing is going to be able to directly correlate business name, Red Hill Family Law, phone number in the listing, 949-226-6917, and the zip code in the listing. So if I had to do it all over again, um, and again, the site's ranking just fine, so I'm not concerned about it, um, but my general preferred way of setting up websites anymore is the homepage is kind of a hub. It's a general uh, web page. That's it. That we're not necessarily trying to rank, but we are in fact trying to brand that site or that web page. Because remember, what do we put inside of the Google My Business listing when it comes to website URL? 
almost always your home page. I mean, with some exception, there are there are ways to do um, interlinks. You know, if you have uh, a lot of different locations, for instance, and you set up one Google My Business listing per location, you're obviously not going to send everything to the home page. It might be redhillfamilylaw.net forward slash Irvine forward slash Newport Beach. You know, wherever the locations are, they've got one in Long Beach, for instance. They would put forward slash Long Beach and each Google My Business You'd have a separate Google My Business listing, each of which would have a different website URL that would point to that specific page. And I'm going to tell you, we'll talk a little bit more about this when we get to doing um, some of the markup data that we're going to do on the website, like schema markup and how you would do that with multiple locations. But the vast majority of businesses are single location businesses with a physical address on the website URL, you're going to have the home page. So it only makes sense to have your home page match as much of this listing as possible. Now again, I didn't do it this way, so don't, you know, do as I say, not as I do sort of thing. Um, you know, if you're if you're starting with a brand new website, I would suggest creating a brand on the home page where we, we wouldn't really have these keywords. We just have Red Hill Family Law, and then we might have, you know, um, one of these, you know, one of the lines like that. And then we'd have 949226, and then maybe I'd put another line like that, and I'd put the zip code, which I think is 92606. And then that's all I would have on my home page. And then we'd start to structure the website so that we have inner pages that cover, you know, the terms that we want. We'd have a divorce page. We'd have a child support page, all that other stuff. What I did on this one is I, I chose to treat my home page as my main um, as my main divorce page. Let me just stop this video here. Sorry, I'm producing videos as I'm recording videos. Uh, that's how to stay efficient. <laughs> um, so really, I'm going to keep this the way it is. It's been working just fine. Just know that if you're starting a brand new website, you know my recommendation would be to brand the website to on the home page at least to match exactly what's going on in the maps listing. So just the business name, phone number, and zip code only, and then we would have category types of pages like divorce or child custody or whatever. Um, so again, I've chosen to have my home page as my primary divorce page. Now I want to show you some things that we're going to be doing here. So make sure you, you follow along um, with what we're going to be doing is with each page that we have on the site, or I, I shouldn't say with each page, with each category we have inside of um, maps, we're going to be creating an identical matching page to match the maps listing. So. The way that we're going to do that is, is normally we would have an inner page, redhillfamilylaw.net forward slash, and we would name it category listing. So we might have family law attorney. And so let me give you an example. Guess what I have? Family law attorney. So I want you to see that that's powerful because Google's telling us inside of Maps that family law attorney is a category. You know, that's what it came up with as one of the top categories because that's one of the only ones it allowed us to select. So I'm following that by naming the little slug here, family law attorney, exactly the same order as um, my category page. So I hope that makes sense. Again, all of this has to do with, guess what? This is talking back and, back and forth with our listing. We've now got an exact page for a category, family law attorney. It matches identically with our listing. Very important to do. And then I'm going to show you what we do with pictures that, you know, you, you've probably guessed it, but we already have pictures that are named exactly after our category. We're going to upload that to our category page on our website. So I hope that makes sense. Um, and I'm showing you the inner pages first because of the way I structure the home page can get a little bit confusing. But Here's another thing that I did. Let's go to the child custody page. And I already showed you this in an earlier video, redhillfamilylaw.net forward slash lawyer. One of my categories is lawyer. 
Well, lawyer is very generic. I don't want to be ranked for Irvine lawyer because, you know, the only thing that this firm does is family law. They're, they're not just a general practice law firm. So what I did is I created forward slash lawyer so that the category listing exactly matches my website. But then all the content around it, my title tagging, everything else says that it's all about that lawyer is associated with child custody and visitation, okay? And you saw where I was actually ranking number one on maps for that. So this stuff works. So you can see again, my photo, which is the exact same photo that I showed you before, uh, directly matches lawyer Irvine, California. So all I'm doing is I am uploading the exact photo that I've geotagged before I've ever started this processed process. Um, I'm creating a slug that directly matches my category listing, in this case, lawyer, and I'm uploading content to it, and I'm uploading my photo to this. So in this case, you know, I could have chosen to just have it be a generic lawyer page. I chose to turn it into something different, um, something about uh, child custody, and as a result, by using um, a slug that's named exactly this name here that matches my category listing and uploading a photo that's named Lawyer Irvine, California, I am tying directly back to that listing. So I hope that makes sense. I just chose in this case to use um, child custody, custody as my quote unquote lawyer category page. So I hope that makes sense. Normally it's gonna be more cut and dried. You're gonna have categories that match services that your, your client does exactly. You know, like maybe there would be a child custody lawyer um, category. And if so, I would create a slug called child custody lawyer. Notice I'm not over optimizing by putting redhillfamilylaw.net forward slash Orange County lawyer or Irvine lawyer. I don't need to do that on a slug. And in fact, I don't recommend it. The only place you really should do it is here where we've got, you know, a mention of... Um, We've got a mention of uh, Irvine and Orange County. And notice I've changed it up to lawyers, not lawyer. Um, and then in here, I've got lawyer Irvine, California. So that's okay to add that to the image, but don't over optimize and do things like, you know, having your slug be Irvine lawyer when you've already got Irvine in your title tag. It's unnecessary, you'll get over optimized and you can get penalized. So. Just to kind of summarize, all we're doing is for every single category, we're going to create a page. And I've already done that for family law attorney and lawyer. So I've showed you those two. We've got family law attorney here, directly matching family law attorney. If I hover over this image, family law attorney, Irvine, California. Um, child custody, I went with the lawyer category and I already explained all that. If I hover here, I've got lawyer, Irvine, California. So what am I missing? Well, let's go back here. I'm missing divorce lawyer. So I again, I, I, I told you that I chose to have my homepage be the main area where my divorce content is. So that's why I title tagged it with divorce keywords and you'll see it's all about divorce. So I've got Orange County divorce attorneys. I've got um, my zip code in there. Let's see here if I hover over it. I've got my zip code in there and then I've got Irvine Divorce Lawyers. And then most importantly, I have um, the name of the business exactly as it matches the, the maps listing and the phone number. So if you choose this route where you're gonna use the homepage as a category style page, you're gonna want to try to squeeze in at a minimum the business name and the phone number, okay? If possible, squeeze in the business name, phone number, zip code. Um, but if you can't, and the title is just getting obnoxiously long, this one's already pretty long, um, at a minimum, get the business name in there. Very important. A lot of people skip this step, and it matters for two reasons. No, number one, if somebody's just typing in a business name looking for you, and you're not titled anywhere for that, or it's not really anywhere prominently displayed on the website, it's not gonna really show up in the search engine's results pages. Um, which means they can't find you by name. And then number two, it matters because it matches our, um, our, our listing and our phone number matches our listing. So you wanna squeeze that in the title tag. So again, 
what are we looking for? Divorce lawyer is our next category. So since this is my divorce page, you know, I've got, there's no place really on the home page to put a slug, right? It's not, home page is not going to be redhillfamilylaw.net forward slash anything. It's just the home page, redhillfamilylaw.net. So look where I did, look where I did um, the, uh, the equivalent of a slug. I put it into an H1 tag here. And I put it as a, a long tail keyword term. I didn't just put divorce lawyer. I put your divorce lawyer. Um, and that's that's having really the same effect as what we did with our, our forward slash lawyer page, forward slash family law attorney page. So because I can't put it in the slug right here, there's nowhere to put it, I put it in an H1 tag um, right here. And so, you know, very easy to do. I, I'm not going to go through details about how to set up H1 tags. You can just a real easy piece of HTML. Um, and it's showing in order of importance the tags that are important, the most important. Title tag is number one. And then your H1 tag is the second most important thing that Google's going to read. And so what I'm doing again is I'm communicating the fact that this page is about divorce lawyer and it matches directly my category listing of divorce lawyer. So for a third time now, I've done that. Now I've got my page here, or I've got my photo. In this case, it's divorce attorney because uh, without getting into great detail, when this page was created, the category available in Google um, was divorce attorney, not divorce lawyer. They've switched that. And so, you know, just pretend that this, that we, when we uploaded this, this is going to directly match um, my category, right? It's going to be named divorce lawyer. This is divorce lawyer. On here inside of the maps listing, we have divorce lawyer. When we upload the photo into our maps listing, it's going to be geotagged and be called divorce lawyer, Irvine, California. So do you see how all these things interact together? How they have an effect on your maps listing? Um, whether it's in the slug itself, basically the forward slash, you know, whatever you name the page or in a, in a header tag, plus in the photo itself, that's communicating back to your maps listing. This photo is communicating back to your maps listing um, as far as the geotagged uh, information and the name, address, and phone number that's in there. It's all it, so it's communicating to directly to the listing itself as far as you know the business name, address, and phone number, and the category. But then it's also going to correlate and sort of talk back and forth to the photos that we upload. So if we have this photo that's uploaded right here, additional photos that happens to be this exact photo that's on our website, this photo that's D divorce lawyer Irvine, California also directly correlates to this here. Guess what else does? What we talked about, the Picasso web album where it's stored um, is going to, from a, at least a geo perspective, is uh, going to correlate directly to our actual uh, listing. And so that's what I mean. We get to the point where all these things are communicating back and forth. And all I mean by communicating is that it's, it's giving a very high level of trustworthiness um, to Google's algorithm to say that this really matters. This, this maps listing really is what it says it is. Um, you know, just to give you a quick example, you know, years ago when it was Google Places, you could never change addresses or phone numbers or any of that stuff because Google's logic is that people in the real world just, they don't move. The, you know, they were... They were set with this sort of mindset back in the early days that, you know, would, would a Home Depot or a Walmart really ever move or change its phone number? Answer, no. You know, we know that businesses sometimes move, obviously. But my point is, is that they want, through the process of citations and um, all these different things that I'm going to teach you where to put citations. There's a number of different ways. They want that to directly match every aspect of your listing. So that's why we have name, address, phone number consistency where, where I talked about things like, you know, if it says park, it should be, you know, Google says it should say park spelled out, P-A-R-K. We're going to spell it out because it's going out there across the web scraping data and it's trying to figure out 
Is this listing consistent with other pieces of data across the web? Same exact concept with our website here um, and with our photos stored in our Picasa album. It's going out to these places on the web and it's gonna say, not only does the listing information directly correlate with this website, so this must be a legitimate business, you know, so that's, that's, that's the primary thing that Google's looking for. Is this really even a legitimate business? There's so many spam listings. They want um, to make sure that it's legitimate. And, you know, one of the primary ways it can do that is scraping the web and going out and cross-referencing your website and, and being able to say, okay, look, I've got divorce lawyer matching a divorce lawyer page. I've got a family law attorney category matching a family law attorney page. I've got photographs that directly match, um, you know, from here match the geodata here. You know, it, it exactly correlates directly with the, the address, the geo coordinates, the photos themselves directly match, all that stuff. So I, I, I hope you're starting to see a picture that Google wants trust signals, pure and simple. Um, getting ranked on maps is nothing more than having these these really well done trust signals. And what I've taught you so far is really enough most of the time to get you all the way there without doing anything else, okay? We're not quite ready to dive into advanced techniques because I do recommend that you take it a few steps further. So hopefully, you know, this is making sense. Uh, just to summarize really quickly, all you're gonna do is on your website itself, you're gonna create category pages. So you know, like in this case, these are new categories that have appeared since I created this listing, like divorce service or law firm. So all I would do is in here, I'd go to pages, add new. Let's go to add new. And I would want to have a page called law firm. Okay. And I could publish that. You know, and at this point, I don't have any uh, anything to put on there, but I would title tag that. So let's say, let me just give you a quick example. Let's say that I did a bunch of research and I figured out that every type of, every time I type in Irvine alimony attorney, um, that a maps listing is showing. And I know that law firm is too generic for my purposes. I would create this, this page with this slug just forward slash law firm. And then I would have all this content about alimony and then I'd have LSI keywords like spousal support all the things that go along with that you know and it just would uh, go down and down and down here all about alimony everything about alimony I title tagged right here Irvine alimony attorney you know whatever it is based on um, my research that shows me where there's kind of the most volume and then I would, um, I'd come in here and I'd have a, a photo that I had geotagged in Picasa, uploaded to my album in Picasa, and then went through the steps that I just showed you. And I would name it Alimony Attorney Irvine, California. A lot of times I'll just do reverses of, of, of photos. Um, so if it's Irvine Alimony Attorney inside of my title tag, which it is, you know, a lot of times I'll do a reverse on how I name the photo, um, alimony attorney, Irvine, California. So I'm not over optimizing for Irvine alimony attorney. I'm using a variation of that. But again, that photo is going to be here. It's going to be in my Picasso web album. I'm going to upload it here somewhere in my photos, you know, under my additional photos that I'm allowed to add. I'm going to have that photo right here that ties into, you guessed it, my address. It ties into the fact that uh, my category of um, whatever we created, what did we create? Law firm, I think. Yeah, law firm is all about alimony. So guess where I'm going to rank? I'm going to start ranking for Irvine alimony attorney. So that's how it's done. It's really just the process of creating, um, every, for every single category, create a separate page and name the category that exact name. Okay. Upload a picture with that exact name. Do it in reverse. So don't you know, uh, do it whatever is a little bit different or slight variation of your title tag. So if it's Irvine Alimony 
um, lawyer, I would put Alimony Lawyer Irvine, California as the name of the photo. Upload the photo. And then, you know, make sure that in the end, all of your photos are uploaded to your maps listing. So that's really it with respect to photos and, um, you know, getting your category listings um, into the website. And then, you know, the only other thing to remember is, let's say that there are no categories at all um, that you can use. You've exhausted every category. Like I've correlated law firm with alimony, for instance. But maybe I know that there's, um, I don't know, let's say there's, you know, there's a maps listing for Irvine uh, domestic violence attorney, right? Domestic violence is something that comes into play, unfortunately, with family law. So let's say that if I typed in Irvine domestic violence attorney, and I know that there's a maps listing being pulled, but I know there's no more categories available. I've assigned all my categories to something, right? And, you know, in the case of divorce lawyer, it was obviously about divorce because that makes sense. Family law attorney made sense for a family law page. Lawyer is too generic, so I, I tied that to child custody. Law firm, too generic, I tied that to alimony. Now I'm out of categories, right? Um, but let's say I want Irvine domestic violence attorney. What All I'm going to do to increase my chances is go through the same process. I'm going to upload a photo, geotag it share it to the Picasso web album, and then I'm going to go through the steps I showed you and I'm gonna name it um, Domestic Violence Attorney Irvine, California, and I'm just gonna come in here, add new page, and I'm just going to create a, a new slug just called Domestic Violence Attorney. Now, again, when you, when you create these slugs, make sure that you vary your title tag so it doesn't directly match the, the slug itself. So I would say something like Irvine uh, Domestic Violence. You could say attorneys, or I, in this case, I would just say lawyers. You know, maybe one other uh, related, um, related title tag, something like that. So notice I'm not matching this directly with this because I don't want to get over optimized guys and then all my content here would be about about domestic violence all the way down same thing we did before the only thing here is I don't have a category available for it to match to but what I'm hoping is that when I upload my photo um, and with the geo coordinates and all that other stuff and I've named it correctly that it's going to um, recognize that I've got, you know, I'm serious about that ranking. I've got a separate page entirely devoted to that. So hopefully all this makes sense. Um, let me know if you have any questions on it. I know that this stuff, you know, gets a little bit, a little bit kind of, it seems a little crazy, but trust me when I tell you it works and it works very well. And nearly every time when you do, when you take these steps very seriously and, and make sure you create photos for every single category, create a page that directly matches that category. So everything ties back together, okay? Let me know if you have any questions. In the next video, I'm gonna show you a couple other steps we need to take on our website that again, you know, you may or may not need to do, but I wouldn't consider them to be advanced techniques. I would consider them to be sort of mandatory techniques anymore that you probably need in order to rank at least medium competition pages and up. So I will um, see you in the next video where we're gonna go over uh, those additional items, okay? Take care.